In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the time when given angular velocity. The question reads, a disk rotating at 30 radians per second slows to 20 radians per second while turning through 60 revolutions. In question A, how long does this take? And in question B, how many revolutions does it take for the disk to stop? Now underneath, I've provided two columns of formulas. The column on your left represents linear motion formulas, and the one on your right represents angular motion. Now as the name implies, the ones on the right relate the motion of something along a circular path to the angular motion. Now to be successful here, you'll need to use these formulas, and specifically this one right here, which tells us that the angle is equal to the average of the angular velocities times the time. And t is specifically what we're looking for. So far, we have this value, which is given in the question as 60 revolutions. I need to convert that into radians. We have this value and that value. So let's go ahead and convert 60 revolutions into radians. Now for every one revolution, you have two pi radians. So using this as a conversion ratio, I'll multiply 60 revolutions by one rev at the bottom and two pi radians at the top. Notice that the revolution unit will cancel out, leaving us with 60 times 2 pi, which is 160 pi radians. This will go in place of theta. So I have 120 pi radians is equal to, the top part represents 30 plus 20, and we're dividing that by 2, so 50 divided by 2 times the time. 50 divided by 2 makes 25 t and 120 pi radians. Now just to be consistent here, the units for this 25 should be in radians per second. And this time is just the variable t. Dividing both sides by 25 radians per one second, right, we're just using some basic algebra here, what will happen is that this number and this number will cancel out and on the left side the radian unit and the radian unit will also cancel out. Now just to show you how it's radians, this division symbol and the units here are radians per second. And remember how you divide fractions you reciprocate the second fraction then you multiply and what that does is it gives you radians times seconds per radians and this is the exact reason why radians cancels and you end up with seconds so now using our calculator to take care of the numbers 120 times pi divided by 25 makes roughly 15.1 15.1 seconds it takes for it to slow down from 30 radians per second to 20 radians per second in that 60 revolutions. Now for question B, how many revolutions does it take for the disk to stop? That's interesting. So for the disk to stop, the final angular velocity should equal to zero. What I will do is use this formula this one right here, to help me find out the theta value for when the angular velocity becomes zero. Now if that's confusing too, let me show my work up here. I'll change this omega with zero, because that's what happens when it stops. Zero squared is equal to 30 squared plus two times. This alpha symbol represents angular acceleration. I'll show you how to calculate that in a moment. And what we're looking for is theta. To calculate the angular acceleration, we'll take the change in angular velocities and divide it by the time. The change in angular velocities was from 30 to 20, so final minus initial. Final minus initial, and that took how much time from the previous question? took 15.1 seconds, right? So by taking negative 10 divided by 15.1 seconds, we have found our angular acceleration. Therefore, I will take this and place it in for alpha. You can even find out 
and evaluate this as a number if you like. So I have 0 is equal to 30 to the power of 2 is 900 plus 2 times that. I'm just keeping it as a fraction because it's neater. And theta is what we're looking for. Bringing that 900 over, I have negative 900 is equal to 2 times negative 10 over 15.1 theta. I'll multiply these two out and then divide both sides by whatever I get. So 2 times negative 10 over 15.1. That should give us negative 1.3245. Then I'll divide both sides by that. So negative 900 divided by the output that I previously got, which is equal to 679.5 radians. The question is asking how many revolutions? So we need to now change this into revs. And we can change it into revs by using this conversion ratio that I spoke of earlier. 679.5 radians times one rev at the top and two pi radians at the bottom. The radians unit cancels. This value divided by two pi makes 108 revs. It needs to revolve 108 times, approximately that, before it stops down completely. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the time when given angular velocity.